good. The only challenge is it hits the screen. Now. All right, you're 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 on. We're we're here in Dallas doing a little live Q and A here with Dr. Adam Nally. <laughs> So the biggest question I get, and people ask me all the time, why do you use ketones when you've been using a ketogenic diet for so many years? And the, the and what I started, and I, I thought the same thing was going to happen, that if you just drink ketones and then you have a few cookies, um, are you just making expensive here? <coughs> um, and, and if you eat the whole frickin' box of cookies, you probably might make some expensive urine. But the interest, the amazing thing, and it came out of a study in cell biology in 2016, so just last year, shows, and the, so if you, if you blockade off carbohydrates, you're gonna use fats, and the body will process fat. Um, and it, as it processes fat, it produces the beta hydroxybutyrate, which is based in ketone, and that's the whole key. But the really cool thing, and this is what I started seeing with my patients and with myself, because I started testing myself, is, You know how much, how many cookies actually stop that from happening? I don't know really the answer to that. Yeah. But this is the pattern that I keep seeing over and over with my patients the last year and a half. And this article actually solves that question, answers part of that question. Because it's a good question, it's a fabulous question. As I explain to people, it's not that we're trying to justify a carb day, if you will. No, exactly. But being like, oh, but if, if you happen, like, kind of like, well, if you happen to slip and that cookie falls in your mouth. <laughs> it's not going to kill you. It, it can happen, guys. Right? It can happen. Where I accidentally tripped and this macadamia nut cookie fell in my mouth. It wasn't my fault. Well, this is what I end up seeing, which is interesting because there, a lot of people came to me and said, well, Dr. Nott, I'm just drinking your ketones, and I didn't really change my diet. And they weren't really horribly insulin resistant. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any major diabetes. But they said, I'm all of a sudden less hungry, and I started losing weight. And I don't understand why. Now, we know that the exogenous ketones aren't a weight loss drug, and you have to say that for Facebook and all that, but what's happening is the presence of excess ketone is actually dampering the, their own production of glucose, so they don't make as much. The, the insulin level drops, and you get less rebound cravings three or four hours later, mm -hmm. which is the biggest issue that you sort of see. And so they, it's, it's an, it naturally suppresses appetite. And so it's the presence of a higher load of ketones that does that. Now the other thing that's really cool is that um, people say, well, it's not going to help your brain either, but with my son, like with ADD, he drinks it and goes, holy cow, all of my staff in my front office go, are you back on medicine again? Because he's focused yeah. again and didn't really do much differently initially, but he was focused. And the reason is that th there's another study, which I got another slide up, I won't show it to you, but what happens is as the level of ketone goes up, it displaces um, the, the brain will use either glucose or it will use ketones. Now it needs a little bit of glucose to, to create neurotransmitters, and it has to have a small amount, but as the ketone level goes up, because it can actually get more ATP out of ketones than it can out of glucose, it will preferentially use the ketones first. So you'll get these patients with brain issues um, that have neurologic disease or things like that that actually feel better, have more focus, are able to function better because that ketone level starts to creep up. And that's what I'm seeing clinically. And, and that explains it. So this, if the liver explains it, and then the way it passes through the brain barrier, and the way the brain will preferentially use it, even in the presence of glucose, you'll actually feel better because of that. And so that's, that's why. Because it takes the glucose longer to break down to get through the blood right here, correct? So, so the what, ketones hit it. Yeah, harder. so the ke ketones hit and they pass right through a medium, uh, what's called an MCT receptor, pass right through. The, 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 the blood brain barrier has to move glucose through. It moves glucose through either for fuel, number one, but it also has to move it through because it then has to take the glucose and break the molecule down to make glutamate and a couple other key components for neurotransmitters, so, so dopamine and serotonin and these brain chemicals that your body likes and uses, it, it converts them out of glucose is what it does. And that's the really amazing thing that we go, well, we didn't know that, that's kind of cool. So whether you're in ketosis nutritionally, or you're adding ketones secondarily, or with lots of patients that I treat with disease when I'm doing both to try to really ramp that process up, that's what that's how it affects it and that's how it makes it work better, if that makes sense. So, so not just expensive urine for the most part. For the most part. Now, I, I've had some patients go, well, Doc, I had the whole thing of donuts. You know, you ate the whole box of donuts, and, and they, we didn't see ketones in the urine, but they didn't feel any different, and their insulin stayed really high. So they just blew through it or whatever happened, and they just didn't absorb it. Yeah. Um, now, the benefit of changing your diet is that after you keto adapt, you actually will upregulate and absorb those ketones faster. Um, if you don't go through that process, you're not going to absorb them. And those are those are the people that say, well, Doc, I... You know, I, I ate a lot of fat or I, I had the ketones and I just had loose bowels.
Well, you've got to give yourself time to, to adapt to using ketones more effectively. That's the so basically, the more cookies you have, the more expensive you run. So yeah, right. Really good questions. Cool questions. Okay. I have a question. Okay, I have a bunch of kids like my son is a baseball player, and like they don't want to lose weight, but they need it, need ketones, and I can't explain to people like they're like I don't want my kid to lose weight. So the the the. the the body wants to be at a happy weight. It really does, and and all those that weight is really driven by hormones. And so let me let me show you another slide that because I, I talk over the slides. Um, and we can really understand those slides. I'm fo I'm following you, Doctor Nelly. <laughs> I hear you. Like, and I don't, nobody else my house eats this my 14 year old. And what will it do if I give him, like, say I give him Max, and he's ADD, and I will tell you, late at night if he has to hit, I will give him a caffeine free Max, and y'all, he doesn't taste the box, he doesn't, like, he actually focuses. Yep. But um, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, like, what if he wants to eat McDonald's? Like, do I have to fight him and say, because I don't believe in McDonald's, but it's not hard when they're starving. When they're well, that's a parenting choice, so you have to decide. <laughs> <laughs> if you drink ketones and you're eating something like that, if you're a kid, well, so still what I what I seem to see clinically with kids is that when they drink the ketones, it actually makes them less hungry. They're going to be less hungry. They're going to have fewer cravings. Now kids are always going to have cravings. They just they're they're growing. Their metabolisms are going you know ten times faster than our metabolism is because they're actually growing, and developing. So they're especially boys. They're going to be hungry all the time. Mm -hmm. um, what you feed them and how you feed them is a choice you have to make. Is the ketone going to help? In my household, we, we let them use that to, to drink uh, okay. because it, 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 it helps to it helps to suppress the appetite and it decreases the overall cravings. Really, that makes sense. Um, I mean, he doesn't always eat horrible. It's just like right after school, he always wants something. Like, no, then I'm like, and he's literally, oh, I'm going to die if I don't eat right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I like I tell him, the summer hits, you're done. Yeah, We're not going to do this anymore. But. So in my in my house, my, my wife will have you know my, my son would come in and he would just be starved and starving. So she'd have fat bombs in the fridge, she'd have all that stuff in the yeah. fridge. And then what are you with Turbit? What am I? Oh that's a good question. Um, I'm an independent promoter. Yes, I'm an independent promoter promoter of Turbit. Um, I'm a board certified family physician, so I have my own practice. I specialize in ketogenic diets and um, and I've started using exogenous ketones with those ketogenic diets in the last year and a half. Good question. We just want to maybe put that disclaimer on. Put that disclaimer. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Independent. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, you mentioned something. Actually, you both did. And this is what I've noticed. I stuck my 72 year old mom on the Prove It products. And really, she notices more so with the Max, but even with just the orange, that um, she's like, 
Well, I'm not hungry. Like, I'll forget to eat. And, and at 72, and I actually was listening to one of your podcasts where you're talking about, you know, this is a C for seniors, and I totally think it's what a lot of seniors need for that cognitive issue. But I've had other people besides my 72 year old mom that are like, I get busy and I just forget to eat. And I'm like, well, there's your ketones signaling that you're not hungry because you're not having this constant carb cycle. Um, and I guess that's really what the science is starting to show us that these are. These are, I mean, one of the reasons they're benefit is the weight loss, even if you don't do a gross keto diet, like, or jump in with both feet and go strict, strict keto, is that they're also noticing that they're hunger pains, or they're just satiated longer, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So, what we're seeing? yeah, two things that I see, which are fascinating, you know, with the ketone itself of stimulates the heart to actually squeeze more more strongly. Mm -hmm. And when it squeezes more strongly, it actually produces a hormone called atrial natriuretic peptide. That AMP, mm -hmm. um, at the fat cell level, rather than stimulating a pathway called a a um, AMPK, it actually goes to the GMPK pathway. The amazing thing about using that second pathway, where, where, where atrial natriuretic peptide stimulates that pathway in the fat cell to open up instead of the, the like the, the ephedrines and the the, uh, the fentramines and these other drugs we used to use, or even caffeine, it opens a different pathway in the fat cell to let the fat out of the cell. The, the GMPK pathway that it hits um, doesn't stimulate, doesn't suppress leptin. Now, leptin is the hormone produced by the fat cell that says, hey, we're f we're, uh, I'm, I'm full. So what happens is that leptin signal keeps coming and says, hey, I'm full. So you're putting ketones in, and the, the fat cell says, don't eat anymore, and you're burning the fat. And, and so it, it has a feedback mechanism of leptin, and that's where that, that suppression of the appetite, has been, at least in part, comes from. And the other part is that because you're actually putting fuel in the gut, it produces these hormones which suppress GABA, which is another hormone that says, eat, feed me. And so you get two different approaches. There's actually three hormones there that actually tell the brain, I'm not hungry. So leptin stays high. And these hormones go down, and the brain says, I'm, I'm feeling less hungry, and I don't eat as much. So, you, so it actually stimulates further use of ketones, is what it ends up doing. And so that's, that's the really cool thing that we're seeing clinically. Yeah. 